be short-sighted to suggest that every single movie remake comes from a particularly cynical bankrupt place as there are precious few that are actually pretty darn good. Though there are certainly some upcoming movie remakes worth getting excited about, it's fair to say that most announced remakes make film fans roll their eyes with contempt. After all, the majority of remakes are produced because they allow a studio to generate more money from an existing property with less effort than making something entirely new. It is business rather than art. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 upcoming movie remakes nobody asked for. Number 10, Vertigo. Alfred Hitchcock's legendary psychological thriller Vertigo is just one of those perfect movies that probably can't ever be improved upon. Although it's had tremendous influence on the thriller genre since it came out in 1958, no movie studio has had the goal to attempt a remake. Until now, that is. Last month, Paramount announced they're prepping a Vertigo remake, with Robert Downey Jr. set to star in the lead role of traumatized ex-cop John Scotty Ferguson, as was of course originated by James Stewart. Scripting duties will be undertaken by Stephen Knight, though a director has yet to be announced. As talented as Downey and Knight are, it seems like there's a lot more to lose than gain by trying to remake what is already one of the best films of all time. Like The Godfather and Citizen Kane, Vertigo seemed like a project even the most industrious of producers knew to leave well alone, especially considering how phenomenally well it's aged over more than 60 years. Given Holly Hollywood's tepid at best track record with remaking Hitchcock, it's tough to have anything but low expectations for this one. Number 9, Roadhouse. While hardly the critical darling that Vertigo is, 1989's Patrick Swayze starring Roadhouse is undeniably a cult fave. Despite grossing a relatively modest 60 million bucks at the box office, Roadhouse's enduring success on home video eventually led to a discussion of a potential remake. And in 2015, Ronda Rousey was announced to star as a gender-swapped version of Swayze's bouncer protagonist, James Dalton. This eventually fell through, however, and word went silent on a remake until 2021, when Jake Gyllenhaal was confirmed to star in a new take with Doug Liman directing. The film was shot in the latter half of last year and is due to release on Amazon Prime sometime in 2023. The supporting cast is being filled out by Conor McGregor, Billy Magnuson, and Daniela Melchior. Gyllenhaal's updated version of Dalton will reportedly be a retired UFC fighter turned bouncer, and while there's no doubting Gyllenhaal's commitment to the physical aspects of the role, doesn't this feel like a huge waste of his and Lyman's talents? Roadhouse was a movie that hit just at the right time and feels so thoroughly of its era, such that any attempt to recapture or even improve upon that vibe feels destined to fail. Plus, does anybody have any faith in Conor McGregor's ability to act? Number 8. Clue. 1985's Clue is a classic murder mystery that, while bombing at the box office upon original release, has amassed a sizable cult following over the near four decades since for its deliciously twisty mystery and killer ensemble cast. Various attempts at a Clue remake have been attempted over the years, but in 2016, Fox announced development of a globe-trotting reimagining of Clue. In 2018, Ryan Reynolds was confirmed to star with Deadpool writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick penning the script. In 2020, James Bobbin was attached to direct, and as of last summer, the script was going through rewrites. It's tough not to look at a Clue remake as a craven attempt to cash in on the phenomenal critical and box office successes of Ryan Johnson's Knives Out and Glass Onion, which have been credited with renewing general audiences' appetite for star-studded murder mystery movies. Nevertheless, with Reynolds starring in his Deadpool pals writing, it seems like there's a chance this one might head a little too far into cheeky wink wink territory and lose all the charm that made the first one so intriguing. Number 7, The Last Train to New York. It's tough to make a truly distinctive zombie movie these days, but Yong Sang Ho's Train to Busan was a rare modern take that was at once inventive, action-packed, and emotionally affecting. After the South Korean action horror managed to gross over $100 million globally, and that just from an $8.5 million budget, it was only a matter of time before Hollywood decided they were going to remake it. 
And indeed, Garmont acquired the rights mere months after its 2016 release. And by 2018, Timo Gianto was attached to direct a script written by Gary Dorberman and produced by Jean Rivette James Wan. The English language remake entitled The Last Train to New York will unsurprisingly shift the setting to the US. Though Gianto is certainly a talented filmmaker, it's tough not to view this as another cynical Hollywood remake made for people who can't be bothered to read subtitles. Hell, considering most streaming versions of Train to Busa have an English dubbed option, it seems even less necessary. And given Hollywood's penchant for watering down uncompromising international horror films, why expect anything different here? Number 6 all the Disney animation remakes. Over the last decade plus, Disney has for some reason decided to industriously recreate many of their beloved classic animations. These include the likes of The Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, Dumbo, Aladdin, The Lion King, Mulan, and Pinocchio, which all received mega budget updates of wildly varying quality. And the production pipeline is showing no signs of slowing down. What with The Little Mermaid due to drop in May and live action remakes of Snow White, Hercules, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Robin Hood, Bambi, The Aristocats, and Lilo and Stitch set to release over the next few years. While it'd be disingenuous to suggest people won't watch these remakes, whether in cinemas or on Disney+, did anybody actually ask for them? Aside from Jon Favreau's The Jungle Book, a remake made with real care and artistry, most of these films feel less like artistic achievements than cynical branding exercises to reserve the same classic story to a new generation with less of everything that made them great in the first place. That's Disney's prerogative, to bolster their IP and invest another generation in their stories. But beyond soullessly printing money, there's little reason for any of these remakes to exist. Number 5. Flight of the Navigator Flight of the Navigator performed modestly at the box office upon original release in 1986, though the sci-fi adventure film has become a bona fide genre classic over the decades. That's in large part due to its creative groundbreaking effects and a wonderful performance from Joey Kramer. Disney began pursuing a remake in 2009, with director Colin Trevorrow eventually hired to helm. Though this ultimately never came to fruition and Trevorrow moved on to Jurassic World. After a few other remake attempts stalled, in 2021 Disney revealed the project was back in development, with Bryce Dallas Howard set to direct a female-led remake for Disney+. Yet the 80s setting and mood is so entwined with everything that made the original fantastic, it feels like a modern remake is just gonna feel sterile and devoid of personality. Flight of the Navigator holds up pretty darn well, so between that and the distinct possibility that Disney will sanitize the original's darker edges for something a little more blandly palatable, it's tough to be excited for this one. Number 4. The Killer John Woo's 1989 action of The Killer is one of the greatest action films of all time, and a shining example of the heroic bloodshed genre that Wu pioneered at the height of his powers. Now, Hollywood's been trying to remake The Killer for about 30 years now, including a 90s effort that was going to star Richard Gere and Denzel Washington. In 2007, a 3D remake very nearly got made, but after this failed to bear fruit, Wu eventually decided to just remake the darn thing himself, as he confirmed back in 2015. By 2018, Lupita Nyong'o had been cast in the lead role originated by Chow Yun-Fat, though by the end of the year she dropped out due to scheduling conflicts. Word largely went quiet until last year, when it was announced that Omar Sy would now take on the lead role, and it was going to be distributed on the streaming service Peacock. Beyond the fact that Wu hasn't made a genuinely great action film in almost 15 years, since 2008-2009's Red Cliff duology, the chances of this one hitting anywhere near the heights of the original are near zero, and so why bother? Number 3. White Men Can't Jump 90s nostalgia may be at its peak right now, but is there a single solitary soul out there jonesing for a remake of 1992's sports comedy White Men Can't Jump? It's so aggressively a product of its era, and that it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it means that any modern remake would sorely lose the charm that the original had. Plus, there's just no beating the perfectly matched 
original leads, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson, whose absence in this remake will surely leave it wanting for charisma. The new White Men Can't Jump has already been shot, and it's due to release on Hulu this coming May, with the lesser-known Cinqua Walls and Jack Harlow set to star in the lead roles. If it's easy to compare this remake to another recent remake from the 90s, House Party, and it's probably worth mentioning both are directed by Calmatic. The teaser trailer doesn't exactly persuade that this will be a worthwhile redo, and beyond offering up one of the late great Lance Reddick's final roles, it seems destined to be forgotten the moment it drops on streaming. Number 2. Arachnophobia 1990s Arachnophobia is a rarest of horror comedies that manages to be both genuinely terrifying and a whole lot of fun a perfectly assembled B-movie homage that benefits from its game ensemble cast and some killer practical spider effects. But last year, it was announced that a remake was in the works from writer-director Christopher Landon. The film would also have James Wan producing and original director Frank Marshall serving as executive producer. Though spiders do remain as petrifying to modern audiences as they did back in 1990, the primary concern for many, beyond remaking such a classic work of cinema of course, is the inevitability of the remake ditching practical effects for CGI. There's so much charm in the original film's fusion of real spiders and modern special effects, and that'll surely be lost when they're predictably replaced with entirely digital doubles. Plus, having production recently wrapped up on the movie Sting, which is also a horror spider effort, it seems like the timing for this one might be off. While Landon is a talented filmmaker with a decent handle on black comedy, wouldn't his talents be better spent on, you know, something new? Number 1. Working Girl Mike Nichols' 1988 romantic dramedy Working Girl was a massive hit upon release. It grossed over 100 million globally and received Oscar nominations for Best Picture, Director, Actress, Supporting Actress, and Original Song, winning the latter. It's at once an infectiously delightful rom-com and a genuinely smart drama about the tension between feminism and American capitalism ensuring it remains supremely watchable and relevant to this very day. Despite that, last summer it was confirmed that 20th Century Studios is prepping a remake of Working Girl, with Selena Gomez set to produce, while Ilana Pena from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend will write the script. There's no word yet on whether Gomez will be starring in the picture, although of course that wouldn't surprise anybody, but it's expected to release direct to Hulu. Though Working Girl's narrative remains plenty topical in 2023, why not make an original movie about this subject? matter, rather than attempting the thankless task of one-upping the brilliance of Melanie Griffith, Sigourney Weaver, Harrison Ford, and Joan Cusack. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other upcoming movie remakes you reckon nobody asked for. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're liking, come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great lists.